cool. We are in Sonoma, California for the SCCA National Championship runoffs and uh, currently traveling uh, to the racetrack and we have a long, super long wait today. We do not get on the track till roughly uh, like five, six o'clock, something like that. I don't know. Today's qualifying two and uh, yesterday was qualifying one and it re went really well and so far we're on pole so but a lot can still go wrong main goal is the scholarship shootout um, with Mazda um, this year and um, we'll see where it goes we'll find out you know after the race I mean I have to win this race in order to be considered for that scholarship shootout um, so, super excited. A lot of pressure leading up to it, for sure. But the scholarship kind of helps with the financial side. The scholarship's a $200,000 scholarship to the USF 2000 level. Um, and Mazda supports younger drivers and the mission to get them, get them started in that ladder system. Having the financial means right now to or you know it's very hard to have the financial means to make it to the next level it's finding the opportunities and trying to show that i'm capable of uh, being good at the next level especially in a faster car which i think i'm showing that i i deserve a chance at the next level The world of motorsports is high pace, intense, and highly competitive. Racing uh, has always been my passion and it has always been my dream. I've always made it a priority to continue my dream and uh, there's no way that I was going to stop doing that. It's heart-wrenching at times. We're told all the time that he has the skills and abilities, but he's limited only by the financial aspect of racing. How far would you go to chase your dreams? Who would help you along the way? What would stop you? What would be your breaking point? For most people, race car driving is the stuff of legend, romanticized on the silver screen and in massive stadiums across the world. For Bryce Cornet, it's a way of life. Without a doubt, it's a stress reliever. It's something, like I said, is something I love to do. I would do it each and every day. I'd, you know, um, Whatever difficulty there, there would come, I would always want to race, and I will continue to do that. Um, you know, as long as I live, I'll always be a part of racing. You saw pictures of Jimmy and Bryce as. You know, when they're little, you can't really tell the difference, you know, tell them apart. They look so much alike and they have so much in common. I always like to think that he has, you know, the best parts of Jimmy and the best parts of me. Bryce began racing at a young age. While most kids were playing t-ball or soccer, Bryce and his dad Jimmy put him behind the wheel of a cart that could hit speeds up to 60 miles per hour. I don't know, he was really excited about getting his cart suit. He got a cart suit, got a brand new helmet. Uh, you know, we put him. It had, he had to jump in it immediately. Put it on. We took pictures and all this stuff. But uh, he wanted to get out to the track. 
Yeah, at such a young age to be going so fast, I was hesitant, um, questioned some of it. My husband assured me that everything was going to be okay and that it was actually safer in a lot of aspects. Uh, of course, when we did get out and drive, uh, he, was, he was terrified, he was slow. Um, I actually cried uh, the first time I was put into a cart, uh, but I... Uh, persevered and uh, I knew that, uh, you know, I, I'm glad my parents uh, stuck through with uh, putting me into motorsports and racing. He was always wanting to win. <laughs> I, everything, everything that Bryce has always done has been to extremes. He was at a race in Texas and um, his feet got stuck up underneath the cart, um, pulled his shoes off and took the skin off the top sides of his feet, flipped him around and took the skin off the hill and um, they put him in the ambulance they wanted to take him to the hospital because he'd taken off many layers of skin and uh, he just said no just patch me up I want to get back out there and he did. By the time Bryce entered high school he had made a name for himself. Earning multiple wins across the region and country Bryce was on the cusp of advancing to the next stage of his career. Unfortunately life got in the way. He had just gone up to um, Toronto in, at Mossport and he'd set a track record and he'd had some uh, teams interested in him. We were so ecstatic and excited about that opportunity that was possibly coming his way. Um, but he began having uh, symptoms of a racing heart and feelings of lightheadedness. And taking him to the hospital and then them releasing him with just saying it was a acid reflux and you know that was what his chest pain was um, and then taking him up to OU Medicine one day when he had called his mother and said I it felt like my heart stopped in math class Uh, I was sitting in uh, geometry class uh, in my high school and uh, had a heart palpitations. Um, didn't really know what was going on. Um, kind of scared me. Honestly, I kind of thought I was having a heart attack at the age of 15. The next day, you know, they said, you and your wife need to know CPR. I remember being in the emergency room and them coming and telling us and telling us it was a serious situation. And I, I think maybe I was in shock, but as soon as they started instructing us that his family and everybody he's in close contact with that he'd be spending a lot of time with, we all need to go and learn CPR. It was, uh, it was very shocking to, to realize that it was such a serious situation. I was uh, diagnosed that night with uh, Wolf Parkinson White, uh, WPW, and uh, supraventricular tachycardia. They put him on a medication, but we were terrified, and we were constantly watching him, and they had him on a 24-hour monitor until we could get him in. And uh, Bryce's rare type put him at risk of, uh, you know, possible sudden cardiac death and um, so that just put a whole new spin on everything and actually really did sidetrack him and us as a family we thought we had kind of a plan and a vision and a, a path that we were going to go on this track of racing and um, it didn't go that way. We had to really put on the brakes and um, look at his health which was key. Bryce's dreams and career were sidelined for nearly four years because of medical costs and health concerns. I knew it was tough on him. He wanted to get back out there. Uh, but, you know, it was, it was, yeah, it was his health first. My high school life, um, 15 to about 19 years old, I was, uh, um, you know, 
kind of financially strapped our family was until we were able to eventually kind of start to get back into it. And I think that was a big part of, um, I feel uh, that kind of put us behind the curve, but I, you know, there's a lot of time to continue to push to make it to the pros. After being cleared by doctors, Bryce went straight back to the track. I knew that as long as he was healthy, we were going to get back out there, without a doubt. Um, and that's, that's what he told me uh, I want to do. And if he wanted to do it, then we were going to, we were going to get back out there. It was, just, it was just one of those delays. To an absolutely beautiful afternoon here in California's legendary wine country as we are here for the 55th running of SCCA's National Championship Runoffs presented by Mazda and had an absolutely amazing venue with that and today we are going for the National Championship in Formula Mazda. I know that they're coming for me. I'm going to be right there. Uh, but high stakes in the terms of it's what I've been planning for all year. Well, today is a test of what everybody's done for the week, right? All the drivers, coaches, mechanics, all that. So it's kind of into the driver's hands at this point to make the best of it. So we'll see. I, I will tell you, it's harder being on this end than the driver's seat end. When I was racing, I would, that was way easier. But on this end, you know, I have to worry about you know, 20 laps and three cars. And it's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff to think about. The whole story here is today we are chasing a national championship and on one of the most demanding, technically challenging tracks that you could imagine and set in some absolutely beautiful countryside. Here is your tire rack pole sitter, 25-year-old Bryce Cornet out of Norman, Oklahoma. As we take a look and uh, we'll see what young Bryce can do, but uh, he sure was effective in qualifying. Yeah, he was. That local track knowledge plays a big part in a place like this. It's so challenging for the drivers, whereas Bryce coming out of Oklahoma, he has gotten a lot of seat time this year, been one of the most successful drivers in this platform around the country, but coming here is a bit intimidating to try and learn quickly. How you feel? Sick. ready to go and this one should be spectacular these guys always put on a great show the Trans Am machine will make its move into the open space to let this field go led by Bryce Cornet and Mike Anderson on that front row and uh, we are just about ready to get this one to green and, uh, this is run up into turn one the elevation change up through turn one is absolutely intense off camber all the way up it's produced some incidents already this event. Everybody this time, they're still side by side fighting up. Oh, and a spin in the back. Damage broken right front on the number eight. Oh, man, oh, man. Let me, let's take a look here. I don't see Bryce Bourdain. Set up regular two uh, emergency vehicles coming up around one now. Yeah, I think we lost our leader, Bryce Bourdain, and I think we might have also lost uh, Mike Anderson. Bob, our leader can come over to you now. You can pick it up. All right, guys. Uh, uh, we have in fact lost Bryce, and I believe we've lost Mike Anderson as well. I believe our leader right now is our former uh, last year's, uh, no, actually that's car number 65. That is Bryce Barnett. But I'll tell you what, what an impressive young guy he is. And I'm not just talking about in the car. Uh, what he's doing outside of the car is pretty impressive. 
Yeah, he is. A 25-year-old, a uh, marketing major, and in fact, right now working on his uh, MBA, apparently set to graduate this December. So while he's studying and trying to maybe uh, write his final project papers for his MBA, he's also here at the runoffs trying to win a national championship. And uh, what a way uh, to end an already spectacular year. I mean, for Bryce making his way down toward the interview area, the number 65 of Bryce Bournet, national champion in Formula Mazda. I think he's got, I think, he, you know, over the last year, he's he's matured a lot to, uh, you know, start taking those skills and those talents, not just the driving, but but to everything he's learned and, and, and start knocking on doors and, and looking for sponsorship. That's, that's where it's at.